Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you also for the invitation to come here to this very interesting panel. Um, and let me address your question, as one should expect from us mainly, from also from an economic perspective. Um, the, the title of that panel and the lead questions posed in the show that there is this lingering uncertainty um, about Europe and about the euro area. Um, we, as human beings, tend then in those situations where there is uncertainty, naturally to, to focus on the downside risk. Um, that's a protective instinct that we have. And so it is also at this stage not much of a surprise that there are many people who really see a very bleak future for the euro area, while I think uh, that on economic data tell something different. And here also, just as my experience as a crisis manager, if you wish, so over the couple of years, in since the very start of the crisis, there have been very many Cassandras around, um, though in modern times that typically show up in, as a male, um, that have predicted the fall of the euro area. And so far, also contrary to the Greek tragic figure, they have proven to be wrong time and again. So the euro area is still there. And let me just say a few words why I think it's also at this stage no reason to, if you wish, sell short on Europe. First point to notice is that in terms of economic performance, economic prospects, the recovery so far has not been super fast, but has been robust. And Europe, the euro area has grown at or above potential for a couple of years. Of course, before the crisis, growth was higher, but we also have to acknowledge that before the crisis, the performance that we saw was partly driven by imbalances that led then to the crisis itself. And if you look now at the figures, we see that in the long run, before the crisis on a per capita <coughs> basis, growth in the euro area and the US was the same. And now we are back to that state. So where per capita growth in the US and the euro area are the same. So from that perspective, the question whether there is a lost decade, um, I think one can, against that background, say that, yes, recovery has been slow, but there's nothing <coughs> like a lost decade. Second point to notice is that the recovery and performance, growth performance, has been more equitable here in Europe than it has been also in the US. And that's an important point also to notice with a view to populism. In the euro area, all income brackets over the last 10 years have profited from growth. In the US, that has been much less the case for the poorer income brackets, and income has been distributed much more to the top. And again, that is one of the reasons why one also sees um, populism arising. Now, when you hear that, you may say, well, then, it's simply not enough. And um, what needs to be done? So from my perspective, of course, more needs to be done. But again, let us also acknowledge where we currently stand. And in this respect, that we came stronger out of the crisis and not weaker out of the crisis. So in terms of strengths, first thing, there have been strong reforms in, in many countries. And we have overcome much, many of the imbalances that um, came up before the crisis. And that relates also to Greece. I mean, if you Greece, look at Greece today, there is big advancement in terms of addressing the current account imbalance, in terms of addressing the fiscal deficit. So that has to be noted. Second point, a lot has been done on the banking sector and making that banking sector more safer. A lot has been done in order to break the negative feedback loop between the banks and the sovereigns. So we are in a better state there. Final point, and that here obviously it also comes to us, we have now a crisis resolution mechanism. So if something happens, there is a mechanism to support that didn't exist at the start of the crisis. Obviously, more needs to be done in a way. So that, that can it be all. And here's the point about potential growth. Yes, we are growing at above potential growth, but that may be too low. And there's still certainly some homework. And areas of homework is clearly to address the legacy assets that are still there from the crisis. So there is the NPL issue, NPLs also in this country. Again, this is not to cry wolf and say the next banking crisis is, is around the corner. We have to see that a lot of the NPLs are covered by provisions, 50% overall on average. So that is important to notice. 
NPLs, non-performing loans, are declining, but they are not the decline is not sufficiently fast. More needs to be done, and we need to follow up on this in order to free capital, in order to allow the banks to become more profitable. So one area where more action is needed. Second area where more action is needed is obviously in the area of unemployment, which is and remains unacceptably high in some countries, and in the area of productivity. It's very clear that we need productivity in order to grow, in order to be competitive. It cannot be all done with wage depression. So there, is a, uh, there are areas of reform. And here for us, it's important also to learn the lesson from the crisis, because often it's said that structural reforms are slow burners. But if you look at Spain, if you look at Ireland, those are high growth countries now. And it's not that it takes decades in order to get there. I think that's also an important lesson that for this country to learn when you have commitment, with commitment and ownership of reforms and pursuing the reform path, then you can get this high growth performance. So these are areas that all that play at the national level. But on top of that, and I think here we are, I'm very close to what uh, Mr. Papademos said, there's obviously also need to work at the European level. And the steps that you outlined is also very much in what is, so to speak, close to our, to my heart and mind in terms of pragmatic steps forward looking. There is the point of, yes, pushing ahead capital market unions in order to make capital markets work better. There's the point of completing banking union, the question of having a common backstop to the single resolution fund, having a deposit insurance scheme as a pragmatic step forward. And that will help. Um, to, to get an even more robust structure, even without a fully-fledged political and fiscal union that is not in the cards. And I fully agree with what others have said before. In the current protectionist environment that we are facing, in it's not, it cannot be the populist call for kind of a breakup of the euro area, and of protectionism cannot be the solution, but the solution has to be in a united Europe in a functioning euro area in order to go forward. And here just one figure that is put forward on the, on the power of that, that every single additional billion of trade supports 14,000 jobs in the EU. So, and that is indeed, um, if you want to make progress in employment, if you want to bring growth to the people, that's then there the way to go. Thank you.